Most modern CPUs are either 32-bit or 64-bit processors. But what is the difference between a 32-bit and a 64-bit CPU? And what do these numbers actually mean? In order to understand everything in this video properly, we first need to take a look at how we normally count. We humans count in a system called decimal, where there are 10 different numerical digits, 0 to 9. This means that every time we multiply by 10, we add a digit. So we have 1s, 10s, 100s, 1000s, and so on. For us, this system works great, but for computers it's impractical, and that's why computers use a system called binary. In binary, there are only two different numerical digits, 0 and 1. This means that every time we multiply by 2, we add an extra digit. So, in binary, we've got 1s, 2s, 4s, 8s, and so on. Counting in binary is quite straightforward. 1 is just 1. Then for 2, you need an extra digit, so that becomes 1, 0. 3 will be 1, 1. 4 needs another digit, so 1, 0, 0, and so on. These binary digits, these zeros and ones, are what we call bits. And in computers, those bits are represented by on and off. OK, so now we know exactly what bits are, and we can move on. So, what do 32-bit and 64-bit mean in the CPU spec sheet? Well, this number usually refers to the CPU's register width. So, what is that? Well, a CPU is of course a device that you can send data to, and there are several types of data that a CPU is able to receive. Two of them are relevant for now. First of all, there are numbers, and of course those numbers are represented in binary. A CPU can also receive instructions. Instructions tell a CPU what to do. For example, an add instruction tells a CPU to add up some numbers, and a multiply instruction tells a CPU to multiply some numbers. Now, register with refers to the amount of bits a CPU is able to take at once. An 8-bit CPU is able to receive 8-bit numbers and 8-bit instructions. A 16-bit CPU is able to receive 16-bit numbers and 16-bit instructions. So, what does this mean for the performance of the CPU? Well, actually not that much. One advantage is this. If you have an 8-bit CPU and a 16-bit CPU and give them two numbers to add up, let's say 5 and 9, they'll both perform the operation perfectly fine, using just one add instruction. But once you want to add up 314 and 570, there's a problem, because these numbers don't fit in an 8-bit register. So, on the 8-bit CPU, multiple instructions and compute cycles will have to be used, while the 16-bit CPU can just process it all in one go. So, larger register size is an advantage when dealing with really big numbers. On the other hand, when we bring this conversation back to a 32-bit CPU, we can see that a 32-bit CPU can already deal with massive numbers. So, a 64-bit CPU is only faster when dealing with insane numbers, which is something that doesn't happen very often. But if all of this makes such little difference, why do all modern PCs use 64-bit CPUs? Well, that has to do with RAM, Random Access Memory. The amount of RAM in your computer is obviously measured in gigabytes. Maybe you have 4 or 8 gigs of RAM. The CPU in your computer can actually address every single byte of data in this memory. And that's because every single byte has a corresponding memory address. And that address is simply a number in binary. Now, here's the problem. An 8-bit CPU can only deal with 8-bit numbers, and therefore it can only deal with 8-bit memory addresses. This means that there are 256 possible addresses, and since every single byte has an address, the 8-bit CPU can only address 256 bytes of RAM. A 16-bit CPU can use 16-bit memory addresses, which means it can address 65,536 bytes of memory, which is 64 kilobytes. 
a 32-bit CPU can address up to 4 gigabytes of RAM. Now, since modern computers often have more than 4 gigabytes of RAM, we need 64-bit CPUs because those can actually address this amount of RAM. So that's the main reason why 64-bit is considered to be better than 32-bit. You do need a 64-bit operating system on your computer to actually utilize this functionality. So there you go. Now you know what these bits actually mean and what the difference is between a 32-bit and a 64-bit CPU. I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.